Hello everyone, my name is Santa and on behalf of Calkine Group, I welcome you all to Calkine's YouTube Live. We all know that UK is witnessing the tough times due to further lockdown concerns, so it is imperative to discuss developments in the healthcare sector. On the other hand, markets have shown optimism in the first trading week of the new year 2021. On the back of major recent developments, such as the Brexit deal, fresh stimulus package of 4.6 billion pounds and vaccine approval went in right direction. So in the light of such a scenario, we are here again with yet another enlightening session. So it is really, really disheartening to see this new strain of coronavirus and another round of stringent curbs. The new restrictions have raised the pressure over the supply chain network. So while the travel and the leisure stocks are facing the heat again. So on this note, we are going to have a discussion on the topic three trending UK healthcare stocks for 2021. We have with us Kunal Sohani. Uh, he's the founder and CEO of Calkine Group, and under his leadership and equity market expertise, it is fascinating to see Calkine spreading its wings across different geographies on twin model of media house and equity research businesses. Kunal. Thank you, Sam, for such a warm welcome. Um, but before we start, I just want to put a disclaimer that any advice in this video is general in nature and does not take into consideration your personal objectives, financial situation or needs. Having said that, I look forward to today's YouTube live session and a very big hello to our viewers. Thank you all for joining us today. Please feel free to ask your questions, your queries in the comment section. I'm happy to answer them on the show or uh, post the event. If you need um, any other questions, please keep on posting them. Uh, you can also visit our media platform, calkindmedia.com or the equity research website, calkind.co.uk. Right, Kunal, and it's, you know, it's always great to have you back, especially in 2021. Um, you know, like we were discussing earlier, the journey of Calkine Group has been really inspirational for many people so far. And despite the challenging work environment, you know, Calkine has been relentlessly serving the subscribers with fresh perspectives about stocks and the market trends. So it will be enriching for our audience to, <clears throat> I'm sorry for that. I think I'm a bad throat, but it will be enriching for our audience to hear your opinion and stance towards the trending healthcare stocks. Uh, which are not merely interestingly positioned for the long run, but also navigating through COVID-19 pandemic uh, resiliently. So however, uh, before initiating this exciting session, uh, let's see if we have some viewers who have joined us. Um, for people who are watching us right now, if you have any queries, please feel free to comment in the uh, comment section below. Uh, we will be happy to answer them live for you on the show uh, since Kunal is already there with us. But if you have any questions that are posted, post we are finished with the show, uh, we will definitely get back to you. And uh, you can also visit our media website, which is calkindmedia.com.uk and our equity research website, which is calkind.com. Uh, so Kunal, our YouTube followers, uh, you know, diligently watch all our videos that we post uh, on our channel. And, uh, you know, for these live sessions, they do ask their queries as well. So uh, guys, this is a time, uh, you know, we hope that you see, uh, stay with us through this session as well. And, um, you know, we, while we will be discussing the stance of um, three LSE quoted healthcare stocks today, uh, but before we jump on the stocks, uh, Kunal, our viewers would like to know your perspective on the UK healthcare sector. 
Sam, thanks for the opportunity. The healthcare sector has been a sweet spot for long-term investment. The UK is a world leader in manufacturing clinical products and pharmaceuticals. Private hospital and clinics in the UK have doubled the revenue over the past five years as the increasing demand for diagnostic services such as endoscopy, CT scans, MRI scans, wherein patient, patients are seeking a rapid diagnosis. In terms of healthcare companies, healthcare stocks, investors have plenty of options ranging from large cap players, AstraZeneca, GlaxoSmithKline to mid cap stocks like Hikma Pharmaceuticals and UDG Healthcare and small cap players, MS Group and EMIS Group or MS Group and Advanced Medical Solutions. Moreover, COVID-19 pandemic has presented several opportunities to accelerate progress across the healthcare verticals. However, it is often questioned that if the healthcare rally is a temporary phenomena or you know, a permanent one, it is evident that several clinical trials to introduce the effective COVID-19 vaccine and testing requirements have supported the rally in the healthcare stocks in times when the unemployment is rising and consumer confidence is battered, the pharma sector appears to be defensive and better placed. Furthermore, the UK is the first nation which has approved vaccines developed by Moderna, Pfizer, and Oxford AstraZeneca. Britain targets to offer vaccine shots to 15 million people by the mid of next month. Therefore, I'm going to touch base on the potential of three FTSE listed healthcare stocks that might tap in the underlying opportunities, AstraZeneca, GlaxoSmithKline, and Hikma Pharmaceuticals. Uh, so right. yeah. AstraZeneca is the first one. Sam, go on, sorry. So uh, right, Kunal, uh, like you uh, mentioned about AstraZeneca, uh, now like we have seen that healthcare sector has uh, truly outshined against other sectors by reaping benefits. Now, uh, why, why do you see the potential in AstraZeneca? Since, you know, we have seen that the stocks have already fallen over 14% in the past six months. Sam, we believe in Benjamin Graham's philosophy on value investing and should focus on stocks with a sustainable business model, quality management, decent growth rate trajectory, and sound corporate governance policies. AstraZeneca has 17 phase three medicines in pipeline, which underpins sustainable revenue and earnings growth. In the first half of FY20, the revenue, cash flow, and profit accelerated, which was supported by the launch of new medicines. Moreover, the capital expenditure expected is expected to remain um, stable, broadly stable against the last year data. Total revenue is projected to escalate by a high single digit to a lower double digit percentage terms. In financial year 20, AstraZeneca appears to be financially and operationally stable and having a sustainable business model. And more than that, um, Sam, I just want to mention AstraZeneca is doing great work. They're doing a lot of good work with regards to the vaccine. So we believe there is a very good future for this company. Right, Kunal. And Kunal, uh, how do you feel that they are dealing with uh, COVID-19? My apologies, Sam. No worries. Um, you know, I was just asking, you know, how, how do you th think that, you know, uh, AstraZeneca is dealing with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic situation? Sam, in the fight against COVID-19, AstraZeneca has advanced its vaccine collaboration with Oxford University. The vaccine has been approved for emergency supply in the UK. The company anticipates producing up to 3 billion doses by the end of next year, which shall act as a powerful tool to fight the serious infection. Um, so yeah, so they're doing some really good work. So um, do, you, do, you, do you think that AstraZeneca's vaccine has any competitive advantage over Pfizer BioNTech shot? Um, at the face of it, AstraZeneca vaccine has been noted to have few advantages when it comes to storage and transportation since it does not require deep freezing and can be preserved under refrigerator temperatures. Of course, other parameters need to be looked at one when we evaluate the vaccine against many others. But right now, they look pretty good. Right. So Kunal, you know, it, uh, it you know, uh, of course, whatever you've shared is uh, pretty enriching, but, uh, you know, the recent data indicates the virus is spreading at a very quick pace. 
you know, uh, there were over 58,000 more cases uh, last week as on 5th January 2021 in the UK, which is the highest daily spike since the beginning of the pandemic. Now, in such a scenario, uh, is UK relying on AstraZeneca's approval as well? Um, uh, yes, the focus on domestically developed shot than the US or some other countries is very important. Also, AstraZeneca vaccine is equated to about 95% effectiveness, as reported by other developers like Pfizer and Moderna. Uh, but some experts do raise doubts on that, but we still believe uh, AstraZeneca vaccine is, is nearly 95% effective. Uh, right, Kunal. Um, thank you for you know enlightening us with the recent development and excellent insight. And thank you, audience, uh, you know, all the viewers who are watching us right now. Uh, we hope the session is impressive for you as, you know, as even I feel it is. So like we said earlier, if you have any questions, please leave them below in the comments section and we will have them answered live for you. And uh, on this note, uh, Kunal, now let's come to another uh, pioneer player in the healthcare space. Uh, what are your views on the GlaxoSmithKline PLC? Um, GSK, FTSE 100 listed healthcare company, which manufacture products and conducts research pertinent to pharmaceutical consumer healthcare and vaccine space. It has tackled a challenging trading environment with tight cost control and robust commercial momentum in some key growth products such as Nucala, Trelegy, Bent Lista, among others. Moreover, it is progressing well towards separating group into two new entities in consumer health and biopharma, which shall generate sustainable value for shareholders. Subsequently, the company is on track to deliver fully adjusted EPS at the lower end of minus one to minus 4% range at the constant exchange rate. Sam, before we go on, do you want to check if we have any questions? Uh, I see there are viewers who are watching us, but uh, as of now, there are no questions coming in the comments section. I think, uh, you know, uh, whatever you're explaining to them, it's, uh, they don't have any queries. It's all clear for them. So Wonderful. let's, let's move keep on to the, yes. Uh, next thing, uh, next question. So Kunal, like I was just about to ask you on GSK's uh, stock, uh, which is trading close to 52 week low. Now, given the uncertainty around the pandemic, uh, how is the company placed with uh, broader market opportunities? Um, the COVID-19 pandemic, Sam, has impacted the group performance, particularly in the vaccines business during the first nine months of 2020. However, some improvement was seen in vaccination rates as US business returned to prior year levels in terms of adult immunization rates, my apologies. Um, adjacently, GSK continued to make progress um, in biopharma pipeline with three approvals in quarter two FY20 results. It has signed a statement of intent with Gavi which is the legal administrator for COVAX facility to support around 200 million doses. Um, new strategic investments have been made in next generation vaccine and antibody technologies. Overall, the company is maintaining a good momentum on strategic priorities. Right, Kunal. So, um, you know, thank you, you know, again for uh, touching upon the prospects of Glax uh, GlaxoSmithKline. Um, let's see if we have uh, any questions from our audience, our viewers who are watching us right now. Uh, you know, uh, if you have any questions, if you have any queries, uh, this is the right time to post them in the comment section. We will have them answered live for you all. Uh, Kunal is here with us. And uh, like I said, uh, you know, if you have uh, any more questions, you can always uh, leave them in the comment section and we will have them answered for you. And, uh, you know, like even Kunal mentioned uh, before that, you know, uh, you know, we were discussing and he said, you know, if there are any questions uh, that audience might have, you can always uh, email them at info at uh, We will get back to you with more information on your questions. And uh, consequently, you can also visit our uh, media website, which is calkindmedia.com.uk and our equity research website, which is calkind.com. Uh, so Kunal, uh, thank you so much. Now uh, let's uh, move on to our next trending healthcare stock, 
uh, which touched the 52 week high in November 2020. Now, how do you think that, uh, you know, Hikima Pharmaceuticals PLC is progressing in terms of earnings per share? Um, Hikma, let's talk about Hikma. They have been performing and maintaining the positive momentum of first half financial year 20. The operational excellence is supported by the breadth of its portfolio, the flexibility of its manufacturing capabilities, and the strength of commercial distribution channels. Moreover, it continued to see good demand for marketed products and delivering strong performance from new launches. In terms of guidance, the global injectables divisions, it has reiterated FY20's uh, revenue guidance of between 950 to 980 million US dollars with core operating margin of 38 to 40%. For generics division, it has increased the revenue guidance of about 710 to 730, 730 million. Uh, dollars. The company has been maintaining a robust balance sheet. Overall, Hikma delivered strong first half results, which were ahead of their initial expectations. The basic EPS reported a 15% increase. Subsequently, there was a 14% increase in the interim dividend per share. So they have done very well, Sam. That's the gist of it. Right, Kunal. So Kunal, like we have some questions uh, uh, from the audience. Uh, now, uh, there's a question by Mr. John White. He's saying that is healthcare really lucrative? So John, um, healthcare as a sector right now um, is doing very well. So I think one needs to look at a couple of things, technology versus healthcare. So uh, that is the choice you need to make. A lot of people are investing in technology. A lot of people are investing in healthcare. And a lot of people are going with the traditional uh, uh, banking and finance space. Uh, but healthcare is one of the most attractive sectors right now. Right, right. Uh, audience, I know we have a lot of questions, but uh, we'll have them answered for you, uh, you know, uh, after we talk about Hikma. Uh, so, uh, Kunal, can you shed some light on Hikma's recent approval of a generic version of Adware Discus? Um, yeah, Hikma launched a generic version of GSK's Adware Discus proprietary dry powder inhaler and formulation technology. And uh, they have been de developed by Hikma in collaboration with Vectura Group. So yeah, so basically that's a generic version of GSK's Adware. Right, Kunal. So Kunal, we, um, you know, we have uh, Charlotte with us. Uh, now, Charlotte is an avid uh, viewer uh, of uh, Calgary uh, Media. Now, uh, Charlotte is asking that, do you think healthcare is safe in the UK? Is healthcare safe in the UK? Right. Yes. So we believe healthcare uh, does have some good opportunities in the UK. Yes. And uh, Charlotte is also saying COVID-19 had a very bad impact on the industry overall. So... You have any so, comments yeah. on that? <laughs> I, I would say one should look at this as an opportunity in the healthcare sector, uh, especially in the UK with the number of cases increasing. Um, the healthcare providers um, will stand to benefit from this calamity. I would say it's a calamity. Please do not look at this as a profit making exercise, but it is a calamity. But healthcare stocks can do well on the back of that. Right. Uh, you know, Kunal, uh, you know, I'm sure our viewers have enjoyed the, this informative session and all the questions that you've answered. Uh, we have another question uh, by John White. He's asking that AstraZeneca is uh, definitely seems like it's, it's definitely a good pick. So, so we do like AstraZeneca. Uh, one should remember in terms of value investing, um, you know, the big blue chip companies, especially in the healthcare side, have done really well over the years. So we do believe AstraZeneca can do very well in the next few years. Right, right. So audience, uh, I hope all your questions have been answered. If you have any more questions with us, uh, for Kunal, he, he's right here with us. Uh, so keep uh, sending in your questions in the comments section below and uh, we will have them answered live for you. Uh, so uh, thank you so much Kunal for joining us today. And you know, you have shared this heap of information with us uh, and especially we have seen our audience have been so inquisitive and you've been really patient with answering their questions. 
So, uh, you know, as we like a take uh, note, uh, any piece of advice for our investing audience for 2021? Yeah, the only thing I would say, Sam, is there is no guaranteed fa formula to have these wonderful winning stocks. The only thing I would say is that uh, please um, look at research. Please do your research. Please make sure you um, look at the equity market uh, over the long term. And also, um, you know, don't um, get panicked. Don't be fearful of the financial markets. And healthcare is very definitely an exciting space. And the only thing I would say is that um, do subscribe to us uh, on our research portals and on our media portals, and we would be very happy um, to help you in this journey. Thank you so much, Kunal. And you know, before we uh, we say goodbye to everybody, and like you all, like you just mentioned, that there's no guaranteed formula to become victorious in stock market. So please, please uh, do uh, share, like, and subscribe to our channels and do connect with us on our uh, media website, which is calkindmedia.com.uk and to research website, which is calkind.com. And uh, stay connected with us. We are very active on our YouTube uh, channel, on our Facebook page, on our Instagram, Twitter. So do subscribe to uh, all our social media pages. Uh, we have guest experts like Kunal who, who are there with us every week live. And uh, we would love to have you there. And if you have any queries, you can always send us uh, your queries on info at calkindmedia.com. We will have them answered for you by our guest speakers, by our experts. And, uh, you know, we hope to see you uh, all very soon next week uh, with yet another topic for our YouTube live. And just to let you know, we are also live on Facebook every week. So do visit us on our Facebook page as well. And uh, till then, thank you so much Kunal for uh, being here with us. And we will see you all very soon next week. Have a good day. Thanks, Sam, thank you.